Lord Kenneth Clark is one of my uh, intellectual heroes. Kenneth Clark died in 1983, but he was for many years the um, head of the National Gallery in London. He's generally regarded to be one of the really great and influential art historians of the last century. Uh, Kenneth Clark burst onto the popular scene in um, the late 60s, early 70s, when his um, wonderful series, Civilization, was issued. It was a survey of Western civilization, and, and Clark was the very uh, winning host of that show. I watched Civilization when I was a teenager back in the 70s, and I devoured the book that accompanied the, the, uh, the series. And it was really one of the great moments of my life intellectually because Clark had a way of summing up what Western culture was about, and I found that his thinking influenced mine in so many areas of art and culture and, and philosophy. Uh, I became very indebted to him, and he's, he's really been a sort of mentor to me in much of my, uh, much of my life. Well, as you know, I'm doing this 10-part um, series on Catholicism, trying to emphasize uh, the beauty and the truth of the Catholic faith. We're going around the world. Well, see, the inspiration behind that was Kenneth Clark. I'm trying to do in some ways, a Catholic version of, of what Clark did back in the 70s. Well, just recently I got back from our uh, trip to Ireland, and um, I put on a few of the final episodes of Civilization. I've seen it you know, a dozen times, but I wanted to watch it again with our production in mind and seeing if we were anywhere in the ballpark of the excellence of Kenneth Clark. Well, I was particularly struck by the last episode, which I probably hadn't seen now in many years. It's called Heroic Materialism. Clark is treating there of the 19th and 20th century, so the end of his great survey of Western culture. And in this series, this episode, he talks about the rise of, of the distinctively modern culture that's marked by uh, pragmatism, by industrialization, by the rise of the uh, practical uh, physical sciences. He looks at the bridge builders and the skyscraper architects and those who have produced the world that we know. Um, you know, I don't know anyone who'd want to go back behind the world of, of technology, uh, the world of, of TVs and automobiles and planes and computers and so on. But Clark points out something which I thought was very intriguing. He said, look at the great product of this um, modern period. It would be the cities, these great metropolises that have grown up. And from a distance, he said, they can look like the heavenly city, but only from a distance. When you get close, what you notice is a certain soullessness, a certain superficiality, which gives rise in turn to a sort of chaotic ugliness that obtains in, in most of our modern uh, metropolises. Clark's episode was entitled Heroic Materialism. The materialism which expresses itself in this grand heroic way in the bridges and buildings and great metropolises of our time. Here's his conclusion. With all its virtues, Heroic materialism is not enough. Now why? Because the human soul is ordered to a spiritual truth and a spiritual good and a spiritual perfection. Though, and this was rather prophetic to say in 1969, though he said the Marxist narrative has been revealed as, as fraudulent, certainly after 1989, everyone knows that, but he was saying it 20 years earlier. That's been displayed as fraudulent. Nevertheless, the alternative, heroic materialism, is not enough to satisfy us. You know what struck me when I, I watched his speech again? How prophetic it is of what John Paul II would say. John Paul, as everyone knows, was a very sharp opponent of communism. He knew it close up. He knew it from the time he was a kid. He was a bitter opponent of communism. And he was instrumental in bringing it down, one of his great accomplishments. At the same time, and this is lesser known, John Paul, not, I wouldn't say equally critical, but he was also critical of precisely what Clark would call heroic materialism. He was critical of the Western uh, cultures that put such a huge premium on wealth, matter, building, uh, the great cities. He saw the same thing Clark saw, that there's something soulless about them. Clark points out, it's interesting, go to Manhattan. Now, I love New York. I've been to New York many times. But you go to Manhattan, and it does have its virtues. There are beautiful buildings and so on in Manhattan. Nevertheless, would anyone be tempted to say that Manhattan has the spiritual power 
of, say, medieval Chartres, or of Renaissance Florence, or even of 19th century Paris. There's something about heroic materialism that flattens and deadens things out. Over and over again in the uh, Civilization series, Clark pointed out the central importance of Christianity. Neither Chartres, nor St. Francis, nor Michelangelo, nor Shakespeare, nor T.S. Eliot, nor universities, nor hospitals would be thinkable apart from the influence of Christianity. What he worries about, and I share the same trepidation, is that the narrative of heroic materialism has occluded the narrative of Christianity. The master story of our time is the story of secular material progress. Again, I've said it before, but look at the skylines of our major cities. The Aeon Building, the Hancock Building, the Willis Tower, the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building. What are they? Well, they're monuments to secular material of economic progress. That's not enough. I agree with Kenneth Clark. John Paul II agreed with that. It's not enough to sustain the great human project. Not enough to sustain a healthy culture. What's needed? What's needed is a bold, confident, intelligent, and compelling telling of the Christian story. The story that the Bible presents of the Creator God who made the world out of love and who sends the great rescue operation culminating in Jesus the Messiah, risen from the dead. That story is still of compelling spiritual power. But we have to summon again the imagination, the intelligence, and the courage to present that story in a, um, in a compelling way. Because the narrative of Marxism is obviously fraudulent. But so is the narrative of heroic materialism. It's not enough. We need to tell the story again, the Christian story, in a powerful way. The church is going through a dark period. The church is under fire, it's under attack. The Catholic story is being told, but being told by the wrong people in the wrong way. We need to tell our own story. Catholicism is smart, Catholicism is beautiful, Catholicism is colorful, it's textured, it engages the mind and the heart and the body. Christianity always has an explosive power. If we let it be itself, it always has this transformative power. find joy. The surest sign that God is alive in you is joy. I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. That's what Jesus said. Catholicism at its heart is not a no, it's a yes. In fact, it's the story of the whole world. It's your story.